very anti-dating apps, but I guess I'm biased because of the nightmarish experience I had with Tinder. I've only met up with three people ever off Tinder. The first two experiences were nothing special. I wasn't excited about either of the girls, and there were no second dates. But compared to the third meetup, oh boy, in comparison, the first two went phenomenally. I matched this brunette girl named Annette. She had up four pictures, three of which she was posing alone in what looked like her backyard. The fourth one was in front of a pond. At the time, I didn't see it as a red flag that she was alone in all of her pictures. Honestly, why would I? But she was decently attractive, at least in my standards. So I talked to her, and it got to the point where she asked what I was doing that night. And when I said nothing, she asked if she could come over and hang out. Considering my bedroom and my parents' house is in the basement with a separate entrance, it would work out rather nicely. We set a time for her to come over. When the time came, she texted me literally right on the dot that she was outside. Punctual, to say the least. I let her in the side basement door entrance, and we walked downstairs. I tried to make the greeting not awkward, but right off the bat, first impression, she seemed weird. Her responses were short, her laugh was weird. When we sat down on my bed and I asked her how long the drive was, she laughed, like she didn't even answer my question. She just laughed like I told a joke. And as she laughed, she looked right at me, her eyes still open wide. It was uncomfortable, and I already knew I wasn't going to vibe with this girl. I wanted her out ASAP. I turned the TV on in the background for filler, and I pretended to be laughing at the TV because of the constant awkward silences, and she never once batted an eye to look at the TV. She just watched me the whole time. I was able to wrap it up quickly by pretending I got a text about going into work early the next day, and I implied I needed to go to sleep. She seemed like she didn't want to leave. It was extremely awkward. But I managed to get her to follow me out the basement door. When she was finally gone, I had to ask myself, what did I just put myself through? Not even five minutes after she left, she texted me, are you sure you have to go to bed? I was having fun. I read the text and sighed. I threw my phone on the bed to charge while I went to get food upstairs. When I got back, I had three more texts from her, two being question marks, the last one being hello with more question marks. This girl was clearly nuts, so I blocked her. Done and done. I went to bed an hour later. I awoke in the middle of the night, like I often do. I'm a light sleeper, it's really annoying. Waking up randomly isn't weird for me. I instinctively felt around for my phone to check what time it was. But my phone wasn't by its normal spot on the ledge charging, and I 100% remembered putting it there. So I got up and started looking around for my phone. I turned on the bedside strip of red LED lights I had hung on the wall to light up the room just a bit. I couldn't find it though, and I'm kind of the person who will let that bother me until I find it. I went upstairs to grab the landline phone and bring it down so I could call my number. When I dialed my number, I heard it ringing from inside the boiler slash laundry room, which was connected to my room. I entered the boiler room, and there was my phone left on the washer machine, causing the entire machine to vibrate as it rang. I knew this was bizarre because I didn't do laundry that night. I didn't even remember going in there. I picked up my phone to see a bunch of new messages from some random number. I opened the texts to see two pictures, pictures of me sleeping. Above the pictures were two texts saying, nice, good job blocking me. The second one saying, lock your door next time. And I realized what an idiot I was, that I was so anxious to get her out of my room that I didn't even lock the door when she left. Then I can't say for certain, but I felt like I wasn't alone in the room. Like I just felt another presence, and I had a feeling that she may have been hiding behind the cylinder boiler in the darkest corner of the room. But I didn't go look. I went upstairs to get my parents and call the police. Given that the girl was dumb enough, or crazy enough, to leave a digital footprint, tracking her and getting charges pressed on her was easy. Her name wasn't even Annette, her real name was Sylvana. Her charges were a breaking and entering charge and a stalking and harassment charge. I of course got a restraining order and I've never heard from that girl again. I've tried all the major dating apps and I never really have much luck on them. My friend told me he was having luck on this app hot or not, so I gave it a try. And right off the bat, I was getting a lot more likes, albeit from girls I didn't really find attractive at all. Still, on my first batch of free swipes, I matched this one cute blonde girl named Julia. I'll spare the details of our conversation, but it went excitingly well. 
It was one of those rare matches where the girl was attractive and very receptive to my messages, seeming like she was actually enjoying talking to me. We quickly moved to Snapchat. I asked her for her number, but she said let's talk on Snapchat instead. I was fine with that. I added her on Snap and she added me back. Her Snap score was low, like under 1000. So right away I was suspicious and upset that this may have been too good to be true like I thought. She messaged me, and I messaged back being blunt, asking her to snap a selfie of herself just for my safety. I told her there's a lot of catfish profiles going around, so I can't be too careful. She opened the message right away, but didn't reply for a minute. I thought for sure the account was going to block me any second. But instead, to my surprise, I got a notification that I got a snap from Julia. I opened the snap, and there was the same blonde-haired girl from the pictures. Still, I wasn't convinced. So I asked her to give me a thumbs up or a peace sign. She opened the chat. I was waiting to see if she'd block me this time. She didn't respond for a couple minutes, until finally, she sent another snap. I opened it, and it was half her face smiling holding up a peace sign. That was enough for me. I snapped her back, and then we messaged for a little while. We eventually made plans to hang out. She invited me over to her house, which was across town not too far away. She said she was home alone and that it wouldn't be a problem. She gave me an exact address. I noticed she had her snap map on, so I did a little check to make sure her address matched her snap location, and it seemed to check out. I told her I'd be over in a few. I changed into decent clothes, sprayed on some cologne, combed my hair, and got in my car to head over. I remember thinking I may have overdid it with the cologne. She snapped me while I was driving, asking if I was on the way. I told her yes. She read it immediately but didn't respond. I got to the house. It had the number 22 written clear as day next to the door. I messaged her that I'm here. She didn't open the snap though, so I decided to just go ring the bell. There were no cars in the driveway, and the grass seemed like it hadn't been cut in a few weeks. I rang the bell, but she didn't answer, so I started knocking really loud. When she still didn't answer, I went back to snap and tried calling her using that. It just kept ringing though, she didn't answer. Was I just pranked? I suddenly heard a woman's voice yelling something at me across the street. For some reason, I imagined it to be Julia at first, till I realized it was an older woman yelling, Excuse me, what are you doing? I began walking back to the street and called back, I'm meeting someone. She said back to me at a lower volume now that we were closer, that I have the wrong house, nobody lives there. I asked the address of the house, and the address she told me matched the address this Julia girl gave me. I thanked her and got in my car. I went to try to message Julia one more time, but she blocked me. I felt like I was played for a fool. They unmatched me on Hot or Not too. Luckily I took screenshots of the profile before that, because I sent some to one of my friends before driving to the house. When I got home, I sent screenshots to my friend group group chat with like 8 other people, asking if anyone knew her. One guy, my friend Darren, said that's Lisa, a girl who overdosed on heroin 2 years back. When he said that, another friend in the group chat confirmed he was right. I got goosebumps because the snaps I got were from a girl who matched that Lisa girl completely. I told my friends, and they thought either I was crazy or the situation was crazy. I'm without a doubt certain the girl no snaps was Lisa. How this happened, I have no earthly idea. Better question, why was I led to that house? I can't even try to imagine. In high school, I was in a big graduating class, so for that reason, I didn't get to know a lot of my classmates on a personal level. Using dating apps in college, though, I was able to match and kind of connect with a lot of the girls I'd never really spoken to back in high school. I was using my app of choice when I matched this girl, Maria. She was in my grade in high school. I followed her on Instagram and Snap already, but I never really got to know her in high school. I sent her the first message and asked her how she'd been. I talked to her about high school a lot and how it was funny that we never really spoke or had any classes together. She said we should hang out that night. I asked if she'd want to meet somewhere for drinks or food, but she said she's down to just come hang at my place if that's cool. Honestly, I like that idea even better. I told her sure. She asked if my parents were home. I told her no, only my sister. Then I gave her my address. She said she'd let me know when she's on her way. Then it was just a waiting game. I waited and waited for the notification saying Maria sent you a new message. In fact, it was going on past an hour. I sent a follow-up message on Tinder, but she didn't reply. 
A few minutes later, I checked her Instagram page and saw she posted a story a few minutes ago. It was a meme. Was she ignoring me now? I checked her Snap story, which was posted within half an hour, and she was apparently with her friend, another girl from our high school. I didn't understand. Was she coming or not? I commented on her story. Are you still coming later? She opened it a few minutes later and replied saying, what are you talking about? I repeated the question, then added a reference to the conversation on the app. She replied, I don't have that app. Send me the profile. So I did, and she told me right away it was a catfish and to report it. I did so, and I think Tinder automatically unmatched the profile after that. But I wasn't concerned about someone using this girl's pictures. I was concerned someone had my address and knew my parents weren't home. I made sure every door was locked. I truly was expecting something to happen that night, but it was getting pretty late, and I was starting to feel a little more relaxed. When my guard was down, that's when it happened. A horrific scream from my little sister's room. I jumped off the couch to go run to her room. She opened the door just as I made it to the room, and we met at the doorway. She had this horrified look on her face, like she just saw a demon. She screamed that there's someone outside her window. I couldn't believe it. She ran upstairs while I went to her window to confirm it. There was no one out there now, but I knew it wasn't a coincidence. I tried to call my parents, but I couldn't get a hold of either of them. My sister slept in my room with me that night because she was scared. I only went to bed after waiting downstairs for an hour, listening for anything possible. When I was finally in bed, that was when I heard a noise. My sister heard it too, because we both sat up at the exact same time. Our parents weren't supposed to be back that night. I went to lock the bedroom door and then got 911 on the phone. I whispered into the phone that I was certain we were currently the victims of a break-in. I told my sister to be quiet when she started making crying noises. Footsteps approached the door, then someone tried twisting the doorknob. Then they started banging on the door, and in a deep, angry sounding voice, a man said, I know you're in there, I can smell you. The 911 operator heard it, and she told me to hide in the closet with my sister. I waved my sister over to the closet and she came. We sat in there quietly the best we could, but he kept banging and banging on the door, and my sister cracked. She cried out, the police are coming, leave us alone. The banging stopped, and we heard the man laugh. Then there was silence. Next thing we knew, the police were outside, and the operator told me to quickly get to the front door if the coast was clear to let the police in. The police then did a thorough investigation of the house, which was clear. The entry and exit point was my parents' bedroom window, which he climbed through off the backyard awning. My little sister screaming about the police must have scared him off. The police recommended we sleep somewhere else, so we went to my friend Joe's house. Ever since then, I always verify whoever I'm talking to from online is actually who they say they are.